Hi, and welcome to Wednesday of Active Aging Week. I'll be reading a devotion on behalf of Pastor Peter Johnson. This summer, I did some landscaping at my house. Part of that involved transplanting some flower bushes. Most of those bushes turned out well. I was able to water them regularly and got a lot of sunlight. One of them did not. I planted it, watered it once, and then promptly went camping for a week. That week was hot and sunny with no rain. Great for camping, but bad for neglected transplants. When I returned from the camping trip, I discovered that my new transplant wasn't happy. It was brown and lying flat on the ground. I apologized to it. The other plants, however, were thriving. They were green and flowering. What was the difference between them? Water. The thriving plants had roots that were able to tap into the moisture ground, the moisture underground, and when the sun was beating down. My transplant did not. I watered it and it got better. It may have even forgiven me. In difficult circumstances like we are facing in America, particularly with regard to COVID-19, Christians often think in terms of surviving, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually preserving until things get better. God, however, thinks in terms of us thriving, even in the face of adversity. He gives us practical things in scripture that we can do to thrive internally, even in this difficult season of life. And here is one of those passages, Jeremiah 17, seven through eight. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Heat and drought metaphorically represent adversity in our lives. Jesus told, Jesus told us that troubling times would come along. No surprise there. The person described in this scenario, however, thrives in the middle of it. How? They go through life fully trusting in God, having confidence that he will come through. Trust and confidence are born out of consistency over the years. There is no reason to believe it would be any different now. Because of that, a person's thoughts can move from where is God to I wonder how God is going to demonstrate his goodness and power this time around. It produces a sense of peace and internal strength. Worry and fears fade away. Here is another passage that addresses the topic of thriving in adversity. Psalm 1, 1 through 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who mediates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither, whether they do prosper. Whatever they do prospers. This passage has do this and don't do that instructions regarding how to thrive, even in the midst of ungodly influences around us. In short, we are the gatekeepers of the influences we allow into our thoughts and lives. Here's how to thrive internally in an, ungod internally in an ungodly environment. Keep the bad things out and put the good things in. Don't do the same things that wicked people do. Don't surround yourself with people who don't follow God or have Christian worldviews. You begin to think like them. Bad company corrupts good character. Certainly, do not align yourself with people who mock God. Here's where this comes home for me. When I want to know what's going on in the world or simply want a little entertainment, my default setting is to turn on the television, watch the news, a sitcom, or a movie. Maybe you are the same way. The problem is that though through my television, I am exposing myself to a host of influences, many of which are not godly or biblical. There are, there are ideas that, complete, that compete with God and his word. I don't think I've ever walked away from watching the news or a sitcom feeling closer to God. There is nothing inherently wrong with being entertained. I need to get the news some way or another. At some point, however, if I'm going to thrive internally, I know I'm going to have to close that avenue of influence into my heart and mind. At some point, I'm going to have to limit what I watch and listen to. Who or whatever has my eyes and ears will begin to affect the way I think, 
My thoughts will direct the state of my mind and emotions. It is better for me to follow the do of Psalm 1. That opens the gate for the good stuff to come in. Meditating on God's word means to fill my head with God's thoughts, characters, and ways. To mull them over and remember what he has said and done. That influence in my life causes me to thrive internally. It's like having a tap root that is right next to a river. If you feel like you are withering internally during this time of adversity, here's what I would recommend. First, spend time remembering the various times and ways God has been faithful to you over the course of your life. Track his faithfulness throughout scripture. Rehearse those things in your thoughts. Trust and confidence in God will rise up within you. This is the antidote to fears and worries. Second, put limits on ungodly influences, lifestyles, worldviews, philosophies, and behaviors, whether they come through a television or not. Remember, you are the gatekeeper of the influence you allow in your life. Instead, open the gates for God's words to shape the way you think and live. Get the bad stuff out and put the good stuff in. It's possible to do more than just survive in the middle of adversity. It's possible to thrive. Putting Jeremiah 17 and Psalm 1 into practice is key. May God bless you and fill you with peace and joy as we walk through this challenging time together.